on Tuesday night, 60 congregants gathered in the meeting room, right over there, to begin a sacred conversation. I was honored to be one of the leaders of this session, along with the one everyone actually came to hear, Temple Israel Board of Trustee Member and Physician Dr. Bill Weiss. And two weeks ago, a similar gathering of 60 different congregants took place, which Rabbi Greenstein led alongside another extraordinary physician and human being, Dr. Lee Schwartzberg. What were these sacred conversations we tried to begin? They focused on a document called The Five Wishes, which guides us to think about, talk about, and make decisive statements about the kind of medical and emotional care we want toward the end of our lives. The wishes are who I would like to make decisions for me, what kind of medical treatment I want, how comfortable I want to be, how I want people to treat me, and what I want my family members to know. Completing this document is a mitzvah because it will help our loved ones take care of us and know they have done the right thing. It is also a mitzvah because it will begin a very sacred conversation with those we love, a conversation in which we will come to know one another better, understand each other's souls and spirits, and treasure each moment we have together even more so than we may have done before. It is challenging for me as a mother, a wife, a daughter, a sister, a friend, and even as a rabbi, to think about these kinds of questions. And I observe that it is challenging for almost everyone. Clearly, we are all afraid of the unknown that we're discussing. But I think the challenge goes deeper even than that. And in my studies on our Torah portion this week, I gained a few insights that I'd like to share with you. This week's parasha, as I mentioned, is called Vaishlach, which means, and he sent. This parasha opens, this Torah portion opens with Jacob sending messengers to his estranged brother, Esau, because Jacob is preparing to travel home again after 20 years of being away. This journey is a journey toward wholeness for Jacob, for he will pick up the pieces of his fractured past and try to put them together again, the holiest of work in his entire life, in any of our lives. On the night before Jacob is to confront his brother Esau, he camps along a river, and he's alone, and he is confronted by a mysterious man, the word is ish in Hebrew, and sometimes it's interpreted as an angel. He's confronted by a mysterious being, this angel, who wrestles with Jacob all night. As the sun rises, the angel injures Jacob by wrenching his hip from its socket, and Jacob forces this angel to give him a blessing. The blessing Jacob receives is a new name, Israel. And these are the angel's exact words from our Torah. Said he, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, Yisrael, for you have striven with beings, divine and human, kisarita im Elohim ve'im anashim, and you have prevailed. This episode is a source for our name, Israel a word that means one who struggles with God. So it is worth our time, I think, to find out what this wrestling match and the renaming that comes from it is all about. Our rabbinic commentators develop the idea that this struggle is about Jacob's innermost, deepest desire to be master of his own fate and his final awareness that he can bravely confront it but he cannot control it. And his brave confrontation is 
worth a new name. The name Jacob, Yaakov, means, it comes from the Hebrew word meaning behind, after. And if we think about Jacob and the way he has done everything in his life, it has been in a behind-the-scenes sort of way. Esau, the brother, is a man of the field. He's a hunter. And Jacob is a man of the tent. He's behind a shield inside. Jacob doesn't physically assault his brother to take away Esau's birthright and blessing. Jacob orchestrates events behind the scenes so that what he wants to happen will actually happen. Jacob strategically lines up his possessions and his family when he's preparing to encounter Esau so that Esau will see Jacob's family and his life and his gifts in a particularly dramatic and impactful way. Jacob yearns, it seems, for predictability, for authority, and he goes to great lengths to control his own life. He is a cautious man, rehearsed in his encounters with the world. The rabbis notice this, and their criticism about Jacob's character with regard to this point is that he lacks spontaneity. He is resistant to confrontation, and there is no authentic immediacy in his relationships with others. He lives his life afraid of what he cannot control. And so he tries to control everything. And he tries not to encounter that which he cannot control. And then this mysterious night with the angel, for which Jacob cannot possibly prepare. The encounter comes suddenly, out of nowhere, and Jacob must simply respond. His illusion of control over his own reality is shattered, and he is forced into a struggle with an unknown adversary. How will it end? Jacob does not know. This angel, our tradition teaches, comes to Jacob with a very special mission, and it is achieved. It is a therapeutic, instructive, elucidating encounter for Jacob. The struggle saves him from being Jacob, the one who is always behind, the one who is always afraid. The struggle shows him that he can be Yisrael, he can be Israel, the one who can respond with authenticity to forces beyond his control. Jacob emerges from the struggle injured. He will limp the rest of his life because of the force of this encounter. But he has become Israel, one who is not afraid to engage in the struggle. His injury, his vulnerability, and his realness and his human frailty is what gives him the right to his new name. And it gives him a shot at mending the pieces of his life and finding shalom, wholeness, and peace. This confrontation between Jacob, one who wants to plan and control everything, and the angel, a force beyond anyone's control, describes each of us, I believe. We are Jacob, yearning for control through our technology, through our money, through our planning, we nurture the idea that this world will bend to our will. But the Torah is reminding us that this is an illusion. And to be truly worthy of the name Yisrael, one who engages in a struggle, we must confront what we encounter, and we have to have the courage to expose ourselves to fear and loss for these entities will find us. The Five Wishes and the booklet is available tonight outside the chapel. That document is a pretext for having a conversation that will help us become Yisrael. Having a conversation with our loved ones about something hard and unknown is our wrestling match. In it, we may find the truth about the depth of our fear 
And we may, like Jacob, always walk with a limp, for fear is powerful. But we will undoubtedly discover our courage as well. And we will uncover the love that can so easily be hidden when we try to orchestrate our lives from behind rather than living them out front. Control of our fate is not the legacy of the Torah or of Judaism. Our biblical ancestors had no more control over their lives and their fate than we. What is the legacy then? Authentic response in a relationship, human struggle in the face of the unknown, the strength and sanctification that comes with being in a community of loved ones, that is the legacy of Yisrael. May we each find that strength in community, whether tonight or at a time in the future. May we each struggle bravely and with conviction. And may we know that becoming Yisrael is a necessary step on our journey toward wholeness. Can you hear that sound?